five and a half pounds from a week ago. And I know she doesn't overeat. And she's of course in denial, thinking, oh, I've eaten too much. I need to lose weight. I'm not going to eat dinner. Don't. Don't. I can't force you to eat, Mommy. You will drink. You, you only drink three times a day. You're going to drink, even if you don't eat. I can't. You can't force someone to eat. And she's made making the directory assistance calls. I, I can't have her doing that either because she has no concept of money, no concept of anything. And, and she'll, she won't think she's made a lot and then suddenly it'll be like hundreds of dollars. Somebody had that problem I was reading and they had someone, a loved one with dementia, in two months time make a thousand 411 calls. That would cost two thousand or three thousand dollars. to find out how many my mom made. I tried to log on to the account and wouldn't let me for some stupid reason. I'm trying to change the password. I don't know why. It's, it's not her account. It's mine intentionally. And I already took away the jitterbug because even on being on death's door and being in the nursing home for three months and being in a mental hospital three weeks before that and then a month in the regular hospital and, and then all that and she still throws her weight around by the way so big time um she remembered the damn jitterbug had that left feature I'm like, oh, I was gonna let you keep the jitterbug but now that you know it has that left feature so I already, I've already heard her on the phone saying we have a lift feature we can arrange so and so friend to come or this no wouldn't no. I had already taken that away from her. Now she realized that her consumer cellular can dial information. I don't know if you can even remove that feature, but I'm hardly the only one with that problem. My mother cannot have the feature of information. Okay, she could easily end up doing just what that person did. We don't have that kind of money. I don't want her doing it. So I have to call them and see if there's a way to remove that. It's always something. It's always something. And uh, offering because my mom's bitching about our floor tough shit. My mom handled everything. You're not a professional. I don't want anything to do with you anyway. You gaslighted me and said you called me about that milk and trying to say blame it on my phone just like we did when my baby died. But months later, oh, I did try to get when I'm foolishly, you know, I don't want to confide in you, I don't want to, I don't want to cry to you over my mom, if you can't respect me enough when I tell you, you were gaslighting me and explain exactly how and what happened, and then I don't hear from you at all, because you don't really care, you care about butting in, you care about offering to get my mother a fucking commode that she will never have, why don't you come over and clean it, you know, you want her to have a commode so fucking bad, and, and Joe would say the same thing to you, yeah, she wants your mom to have a commode, Go have her to come clean it every day. And then she's offering to do our kitchen floor. You're not a professional. You're not going to do our fucking kitchen floor. This is my mom bitch and she has to look at it. Yeah, she has to look at it. I've handled everything for months and months, over a year, for two years, whatever. She has to look at it. And I'm to come. You're not a professional. You're not coming to do our fucking floor in any of you. Never had ants here ever, ever, ever. And we're hardly the cleanest people. The toaster makes crumbs all the time. It goes underneath. Maybe it's because it's an old toaster. Are there any toasters that won't make any crumbs at all? I think that's annoying too. You make you put one thing in that toaster and there's crumbs underneath the toaster. So does that mean it's old and a new toaster wouldn't do that? I don't know. I just know it's fucking annoying, especially if you have ants. It's not because it builds up inside and then there's crumbs. I cook one thing in that toaster and there's crumbs underneath it. I've already emptied them all out in the dish in the basket. Garbage. So she has the fluid build up and she's in denial. She's five and a half pounds heavier than she was a week ago. She won't take the LASIK. She won't, you know. Doctors are all involved. We can't shove the pill down her throat. She doesn't want to take it. We can't force it. We're compression stock, and she can just take them off. So, you know, 
but her doctor's aware of it, and that's it. My conscience is clear. The VNA nurse's conscience is clear. Something happens to my mother. So I've been taking her weight every day, and it stayed steady, stayed steady, stayed steady. And now suddenly, it isn't staying steady. And she's, oh, I'm just, I'm gaining weight. I have to eat less. Mommy, you have the fluid retention. I can see it in your belly. I'm not, you're, you have fluid buildup. You're bloated. So she's in denial and my conscience is clear. I've been already grieving for her for over a year anyway. Over a year I've already been grieving for her. She's in total denial. But again, medical profession, they're involved, doctors involved, and she's making this choice. They know what's going on. They say she's she's fine, but you know, she that was she when she five pounds less than she is now. And I feed her, and I know damn well she's not overeating. I know damn well, like, you can see the difference. It's bloated. Okay, something happens to her. Ah, nothing going to happen to me. I know you used to have that attitude all the time, Mom. You have that attitude, and there's nothing I can do about it. Joe hasn't experienced it with some loved one with mental illness, but he and all, a lot of other people have experienced it with physical illness, or people who have physical illness, elderly, just want to be in denial and want to pretend everything's fine. And bad things happen to them, you know. I'm 78 years old, so, you know, I'm already grieving for her, and, and that's it. I've, I've explained to her, doctors have explained to her, nurse, VNA nurse explained to her. She, she didn't mince words. She's like, you know, um, go in this water pill. It's only temporary, but I understand her not wanting to go in the water pill because she doesn't want to pee, you know, and she's in the walker, and she, I get it, I get it, but she's like, you're going to wind up in the hospital. I won't wind up in any hospital. And then, um, but her doctor said there, and an, and an urgent care doctor said, we made it urgent care because she wrapped that thing around her finger and tried to keep the ring on, and underneath was all this pussy, and, and you can see it. Though, so. But even he said, I said, well, she's seems incompetent. He's like, well, she seems competent to me. And she says she doesn't want to do X and take the Y, so she can't, she's not going to do it, fine. And, but she gave me her word she would wear the compression stockings, and then she won't. And she says, yes, Jay, what if I start wearing the, you should, you should, get that, it'll help, but if she doesn't like them, she'll just take them off. And she's obsessed with wanting a wheelchair. Again, ignorant, ignorant church people who are in any universe are friends. They're friends in quotations. They're not her fucking friends. They don't. They don't hang out with her and con they confide and all that. that. No, they're not her friends. The mentally ill ones who I welcome here with open arms, they're her friends. But one of them is in a mental hospital for the second time in not that much time. Because last time she told me she was in one and she in one again. And who knows what medication she's on. I've seen her all drugged up here before. Okay? It's a vicious cycle and she's way younger than my mother. She's younger than me. And the poor woman's in a mental hospital again after telling me not that many months ago that she'd just been in one. So. But anyway, when she's not in a mental hospital anymore, she's welcome here. And the other one who works full time is welcome here. With open arms, I don't have to worry about them trying to tell me what to do and talk to me about my mom having a wheelchair and talk to me about my mom having a fucking commode that she would never have. Occupational therapist said that right away, months ago, there's a tipping risk you're not having. A, a commode, and we even have a note signed by her. No commode needed tip risk. But of course, so and so has a loved one who had a commode, and it was it was fine. Yeah, you come here and clean it, then, bitch. Nothing to do with you. You know, my friend, if you if I tell you if I leave you a very detailed voicemail about how upset I was with your gaslighting voicemail of me that I checked my messages and text every day. You did not get back to me. It's not my phone. You didn't get back to me and now you're saying you did. Okay. What you did was hurt me very badly and then double whammy because when I tell you you hurt me, you don't fucking care. I will never fucking talk to you again. My mom's not going to force me to talk to you like she tried to do last night when I come home from my joyous walk of blasting my music in my ears. Walking for miles, escaping your cons by my constant badgering of me. No, doesn't care. She'll call me from any part of the house for any reason, that, any whim, any reason that comes to her mind. And I always have to run to her because it could be an emergency. 
the other day, she hadn't even finished her breakfast, I'm sorry, the other day, yesterday, she hadn't even finished her breakfast and calling me and I'm ignoring her and I'm in my bedroom, you know, having my own life. And, and, and then when she doesn't let up, I go out there because again, it could be an emergency and all she wanted was fucking gum. What she wanted was really gum. You haven't even finished your breakfast and you're asking me for gum. Or maybe she was in the bathroom and wanted gum. Some stupid thing anyway where I always have to run because it could be an emergency. It's like the boy who cried wolf. And she probably doesn't even remember getting up in the middle of the night. And, and when I told her, go back to bed. Or if you're not going to go back to bed, just go in your room, leave me alone. I'd accidentally fall asleep, stretching my legs, watching the TV, watching. First it was friends, and then it went on to mom, but I did fall asleep a little bit. But now, I'm on hardly any sleep. I actually, I, I, but anyway, and she gets up, and then I tell her to go back to bed. And she starts talking in tongues to me, which is evil. Joe says it's evil. It's not religious in any universe. Joe told me that decades ago when we were together, his boyfriend called me. And, and it isn't, it's not anything that these people think. It's not any religious experience. And my mom's not talking in tongues. She's talking gibberish. Go back to bed. Leave me alone. It's the middle of the night. <laughs> mom, go back to bed. <laughs> you afraid of me? No, I'm not fucking afraid of you. I choose to not be afraid of you. I don't like you talking in tongues, though. What you view is talking in tongues, and you're just talking gibberish. I don't even believe the people in the church are actually talking in tongues, and neither does Joe. They think it's all bullshit. I have to deal with that in the middle of the night, her talking in tongues to me when I tell her to go back to bed. Leave me alone. It's the middle of the night. Leave me alone. Go back to bed. I does the church woman and did whatever all the other church people because more than one who want to talk to me about my mom having a wheelchair and talk to me about her having a fucking come on do they know what happens in this house no do they know she was fucking talking in tongues and quotations and me to me in the middle of the night because I told her to go back to bed I'm not going back to bed don't go back to bed just go in your room and leave me alone I'm not going to try to force you to go back to bed she did go back to bed but yeah she's talking tongues and now you're afraid I mean no not afraid of you mom I'm not fucking afraid of you at all. Me not liking it does not equate to me being fucking afraid of her. I don't like it. I also will definitely point out Oh, people don't have a fucking clue. Who want to talk to me? Go fuck yourselves, all of you. Especially. She offered to do the floor. She's not a goddamn professional. How much you pay in the contractor? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She's not a professional. She's not doing our floor. Even if I wasn't furious with her, but it's not furious, I'm done, okay? If I tell you that you have hurt me and you, I'm angry with you and you're gaslighting me in this voicemail. I don't appreciate because she overheard me saying, Mom, don't call her back. I don't appreciate, um, she doesn't get back to you. And oh, and I don't, I, I did try to get back to you. I did more than once. I don't appreciate, don't accuse me. Please don't accuse me of doing things I didn't do. You did do them. You did, did, did. And when I tell you, explain to you exactly how you did it, you never get back to me for eight days until my mom wants a wheelchair. Then it's Laura one, then wants to talk to you, Laura. I have no rights and no life. Yeah, you want my mom to have a commode so badly you come and fucking clean it every day, bitch. So Joe would say to you. Yup, come in. I'm coming, coming. You're gonna elevate your legs, I'll get you your phone.